We're back with the Kansas debate that is for the birds. Really, it's about a bird, at least on the surface. There's a lot of grousing about a change taking flight in an effort to protect and preserve an icon of the Great Plains. Meet Timpanucus pallidocinctus, also known as the lesser prairie chicken. Known for its bright colors, unique call, and showy displays, a million of these little guys once ranged across Colorado, Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, and New Mexico, but not anymore. Now there are fewer than 32,000 of them, including birds in South Central and Western Kansas. Late last year, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service listed the species as threatened in that area, working to protect the native grasslands and prairies it calls home. But here's the rub. Development shrank the natural range for these birds over the years, and about 95% of what's left is privately owned by farmers, ranchers, energy producers. Republican critics of upgrading the status to threaten, like Kansas Senator Roger Marshall, are worried about what further restrictions could mean. So whenever you add rules and regulations, it drives up the cost of doing business. It's going to drive up the cost of doing business for farmers and ranchers, and that equals higher prices at the grocery stores. And again, the senator's quick to point out he believes the classification change also means a tougher time for oil, gas, and wind energy producers in western Kansas. The House in Washington passed a repeal of the decision, but it stalled in the Senate, and President Biden has said that he'd veto that measure. Joining me now to get to the heart of this issue, please welcome Jackie Augustine, Executive Director of Audubon of Kansas. It's a conservation group that supported this change. Uh, thanks for being here on a topic we don't usually get to talk a lot about here on the program. Uh, you earned your PhD in biology from K-State studying prairie chickens, and we know for the last decade you've been studying their habitat. How big of an issue is this really in your opinion? I think it's going to provide a lot of protections for the bird that haven't been uh, present of previously. I mean, we've been relying on voluntary conservation that hasn't been enough to increase populations. And so I hope this will bring further conservation initiatives. So the lesser prairie chicken in our area in Kansas is threatened in other parts, especially in the southwest, it's listed as endangered. What does this change? You, you mentioned that it will provide more protection. Does it provide further restrictions as well for people who live around these habitats? I've been talking to landowners in western Kansas and they tell me that they're not going to change what they do very much. They're still going to graze the cattle, they're still going to um, you know, harvest corn and wheat as they have. I think the biggest change we're going to see is that it's going to dictate where energy development occurs. And so um, energy development can still occur within the range, but if it does, they have to conserve regions out, you know, they have to conserve other habitat elsewhere in the range. And so it is going to um, encourage energy development to occur outside the range. Range. Is that the number one threat right now to less prairie chicken? Yeah, it's habitat loss, fragmentation, and degradation. And so when you put in oil, wind, solar, and the transmission lines, it fragments the habitat. And so, um, you know, that is one of the major threats. But there's still um, some farming practices that could be changed if, if farmers are willing to do so that could improve habitat in the region. Explain the, the habitat of, of this bird because, I mean, it, it's fairly fragile, you'd say, right? Yeah, I mean, Western Kansas, we know they have a extreme drought right now, and so it's really susceptible to drought and um, good conditions. And so their habitat, they require short grass for dis display, um, medium grass for raising their brood, and tall grass for nesting. And that tall nesting grass is the, the part of their habitat that's in short supply. Do you understand the frustration coming from critics of, of the change? Yes, I do, because, um, you know, I think change is hard in any case, and um, we're talking... It, you know, if a county is restricted from having oil and energy development, that does um, limit some of the economic opportunities. But I think if we take a long-term view, um, if we can get the populations back up, that those uh, energy development could happen again. And real quick, what's Audubon of Kansas doing right now on this issue? Um, our main thing is drawing, drawing attention to the issue. Um, we are hosting a, a, a Kansas Lectrex Prairie Chicken Festival every April, and so that brings um, people into the region to see this fascinating bird. Um, so we're doing that, and we also um, are a, a voice for the prairie chicken whenever legislation or other issues can be. Uh, um, so we offer a voice for them. Interesting. Well, thanks so much for, for shining a light on this issue, Jackie Augustine. Uh, who knew a prairie chicken could cause so much controversy? Yeah, I think um, if prairie chickens are on a habitat, it's a sign of a healthy grassland, and that's what we all want. All right, Jackie Augustine, thank you. We'll be thank right you. back.